Hey, Elias, um, the corporate's gonna need you to find the difference between these four images. So, uh, I'm just gonna leave these with you and, uh, you can tell me when you, uh, get all of them. Oh yeah, sure, no problem, I'll get right to that. They're all the same image. No, they f aren't! I should really stop getting my video ideas from Twitter. But anyway, people have been talking about animated movies a lot recently, and I want to add my two cents into it. Especially with the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie coming out, a lot of people have been saying that animated films have kind of copied Spider-Verse. A lot of movies like Mitchells vs. the Machines, Puss in Boots, and Enter Galactic have been kind of called Spider-Verse copycats in the way that their art style and animation works, which I don't really get because it's just not true whatsoever. I mean, we can all have our opinions about art style, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to talk from an objective point. Like, these are not the same at all. So today we're going to talk about that, 2D versus 3D animation, and also why people who consume media are generally toxic sometimes. Do the thing! So why do people keep thinking that every other animated movie is a Spider-Verse clone? Well first let's look at what Spider-Verse did when it comes to animated movies. As you all probably know, Pixar and Disney have been ruling the animated sphere of media for like the last 20 years. For 2D animation, Disney was the undisputed champ, while on the other side with 3D animation, Pixar was ruling the world. When Disney bought Pixar, we could see an immediate change within the entirety of the animation industry, kind of following their lead in terms of animation style. This created a wave of movies that all had this same 3D cartoon cartoonish style that evolved slowly and not too much over the years. And of course, other companies like Sony and DreamWorks use similar styles to also follow in the footsteps of Disney. However, this is where I kind of want to make my first distinction. Ever since that Disney and Pixar merger, people have been saying that basically all animated companies are producing the same style of content. While all the stories are different and we can expect a lot of different things from different companies, the animation look all seem to look the same to a lot of people. A lot of people called it the Pixar style because it was the one that Pixar basically created themselves. Themselves. However, I don't think this is entirely true. In fact, there were quite a few movies that pushed the boundaries and limitations of this animation style over and over again, and we don't really talk about it that much. Specifically, there's two movies I want to focus on that kind of did this before anybody else and that we don't fully talk about. Those two movies were Kung Fu Panda and The Lego Movie. First, to get out of the way since it's the easiest one, I think we all know what The Lego Movie did for the film industry. Even though The Lego Movie came out in 2014 when I was still a kid, yeah, The Lego Movie is almost a decade old. How do you feel about that? Even I could tell that it was such a different movie. Since it came out before I knew anything about animation or CGI, I actually believe that it was just a fully stop motion animated movie like Coraline. I think the Lego movie was one of the first movies to really embellish itself into the medium that it was trying to represent. With its extremely realistic but also really expressive animation style, it made random Lego pieces and characters feel so real and so connected that the movie turned out to be an amazing success. The production of the movie also had a lot of technical advancements for the entire film industry. People have heard me talk about it before, but the Aces color space was used in the Lego movie, and it really helped bring those really bright brights and really dark darks out to give it that really good realistic feel. I've been saying really a lot, but it's really good, so let's just move on to the next movie. I don't think a lot of people realize the absolute change that Kung Fu Panda brought to the animation industry. Each movie in that entire franchise had a different animation style for all the flashbacks and stuff that they would use throughout the movie. Combining that with its amazing choreography of its characters and honestly some of the best villains and honestly, all of media. Literally, I can go on for hours about how Tai Lung is a better version of Anakin Skywalker, but that, that's for a different video. Either way, what I'm saying is that both of these movies extremely pushed back against the regular style of animation that Pixar and Disney was doing. And I think it's because these movies pushed so many boundaries that we eventually got one of the best movies of all time that I can't wait to talk about. That's right, you knew it was happening. Let's talk Spider-Verse. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse undoubtedly changed the entire animation industry. The unique animation style developed for the movie was deeply integrated with the actual medium that its story came from. To the point where Spider-Verse literally feels less like a 3D animated movie and more just like a moving comic book. When this movie came out, we got other movies like Ralph Breaks the Internet, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch, and Incredibles 2. We can debate if those movies are good or not, but there is a similar style that a lot of people attribute to each of those movies. While I do slightly agree, I can see the similarities that all come from completely different companies, which can feel kind of 
lazy in a way. So of course, when people went out to see Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, everyone was equally shocked and amazed. I mean, why do you think I call it one of the best movies of all time? Because of how amazing it was for the time that it was created in. Spider-Verse uniquely used its source material to create an entire world based around comics, and that world felt so integrated and so real to everyone who saw it that it just became an actual phenomenon within animation. That phenomenon led to other animation studios realizing they don't have to follow the Pixar model anymore. That the possibility for other animation styles to be used for more unique storytelling can and will be profitable. But that was back in 2018. At the time, it was very new and very exciting. Now, it seems we're falling back into the same problem. Or are we? Let's talk about the movies since Spider-Verse's release. Since Spider-Verse came out, we've had a wave of really good animated movies. Movies like this include Puss in Boots The Last Wish, Enter Galactic, and very recently a trailer is dropped for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, Mutant Mayhem. Now, if you look at all these side by side, it actually becomes much more difficult to discern what exactly is similar about all these movies. I'm not saying that they're not similar, because they definitely are, but when talking specifically with reference to Spider-Verse, what exactly do all of these four movies have in common? Common. Honestly, the answer doesn't have an exact name yet, so I'm going to try to explain it the best way I can. You see, the similarity that I find between all these movies is something I like to call 2.5D animation. Before Spider-Verse, all the way when CG animation was first created, there was this idea to combine 3D work with 2D animation as well. This idea has evolved over the years, and we see it used in a lot of different ways. The way Spider-Verse uses these techniques is to create a lot of different effects related to comics as 2D animation designs on top of 3D animation. Things like eyebrows and cheekbones are drawn in on top of 3D models of characters. This allows for a lot more of the 2D style of extreme expression that we're used to, along with the fluidity and ease of 3D animation. We can also see this in a lot of other media that was created around the same time as Spider-Verse. A good example is Arcane, which may not have came out the same time as Spider-Verse, but was in development around the same time. The animation for that show greatly relies on the fact that 2D animated effects are put in between and on top of 3D animation, sometimes even having 3D characters move around on 2D backgrounds. And if we really want to get into it, anime has been doing this for the past decade. Yeah, people may not like it, but CG animation and anime directly relates to a lot of this stuff. The combination of 2D and 3D animation is something that it greatly benefits from. If you want a really good example of this, then look no further than the amazingly animated Demon Slayer movie Mugen Train. The movie itself relies a lot more on 2D animation, but when the camera movements start getting a lot more confusing and the action scenes get a lot more intense, the CG becomes a lot more integral to a lot of what's going on, and honestly it makes it some of the most beautiful stuff I've ever seen. All of this to say, the combination of 3D animation and 2D animation to create this new 2.5D style of animation is honestly an amazing thing. But it's also the only thing that's the actual similarity between all those four movies I said before. Beyond that, the movies are actually very different, let me explain how. I think you can really see the differences between each of the films by looking at the art style and how it directly was influenced by the story that it's creating. If we think about Puss in Boots, the Last Wish. The movie has none of that comic book style that we were used to in Spider-Verse. The colors don't contrast as much, there's no Kirby dots or anything like that, so we don't see a lot of what we know to be comic books type of animation. However, what we do see, at least to me, is something that looks a lot more like a fairy tale book. Watercolors that fade into each other, pastels that contrast each other but aren't too striking. Even some of the fees frames and backgrounds look like a piece of paper that was painted on, and much less like a printed comic book. And what about Enter Galactic? Well, there we also see a big difference. Sure, it's also about black main characters that live in New York, so there are going to be similarities in that respect. But in terms of art style, the lights and the colors are a lot more striking and different. To me, it looks like an artist painting from the Harlem Renaissance, just a giant collage of a bunch of different colors that are meant to depict a general image. If you look at these two movies based off their influences, and then look at Spider-Verse, you can see a lot of differences. Sure, both use 3D animation with a mix of 2D animation to create a kind of mixed style of sorts. However, the influences that brought them to that animation style are completely different and change a lot of what that animation looks like. Like, you wouldn't call the movies Kiki's Delivery Service and Your Name the same, right? Sure, they both use the anime art style, but because the stories they both tell are so very different, they draw and animate these characters in very different ways. Kind of like the same process, but different conclusion. This is actually the 
the unique thing about art style. No matter what, even if you try to trace and copy another person's art style by hand, you will still end up adding a few of your own little trinkets and differences to it. Does that make it right to trace and copy work? No. However, if you're looking to someone else's work for reference and then using that to transform it into your own type of style and your own type of work, then you can get something that's actually yours and something that's actually very unique to you. The interesting thing about art in general is that everyone takes something from everyone else. It's just about how you use those things that you were influenced by. And those things that you create with those differences then influence other people. And that's how art is generally created. So now we know that all of these animated movies are not the exact same art style. So why am I still talking? Well, that's just because I have an actual important question for everybody watching and listening right now. Does it matter? I mean this in full seriousness. Why does it matter if movies look the same? Or in general, why does it matter if movies are similar in different respects? I notice a lot of people hating on the general animation style that Pixar and Disney had basically created themselves, and I got really confused. Like, guys, we all watched the same movies. They were good. Sure, Pixar movies have definitely a similar feel to them, but does that make them not unique on their own because of their stories? Like, look at the movies Soul and Up real quick. Soul and Up, animated by the same studio, both made me cry, both are extremely emotional, extremely heartfelt movies. But in what universe would you call them the exact same movie? And by what metric would you say that one is ripping off the other? Also might I ask, what is the difference between a cliche of a genre and ripping off someone else's work? If you're going beat through beat through a whole story just copying word for word someone else's script, then yeah, of course that's copying. But stories do have general formats, so what exactly is copying in that case? I don't know, maybe I just listened to a loud minority of people and got confused about what the actual issues were. I just know that when I see a movie and then see a movie that's similar with different characters and a few different types of story arcs, I'm perfectly fine with that. Not only am I fine, but I actually find that very enjoyable. An example I really like to use is the first Doctor Strange movie and the first Iron Man movie. I know we've completely departed from talking about animation, but just hear me out real quick. The film majors got a film major, let's just do this. I hear a lot of people hate on Marvel because they think that a lot of their movies are extremely similar. And here's the thing, I don't really argue that the movies are different because I know I'm not going to get through to people that way. I definitely respect that there are similarities between the movies, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be. Is there an issue with the industry getting polluted by the exact same type of content? Yes. However, a lot of people forget that it's an industry. People are trying to make money, and they make money off of what people enjoy and go to the most. Are you telling me that if you made something that was not just really good, but also made you a lot of money, you wouldn't try to recreate that type of energy again? Especially when you can create the same type of project over and over again, each time with different characters that you created or different story ideas, that each would lend itself to that same type of project, changing it and giving it a bit of evolution each time. That's where we get to Doctor Strange and Iron Man. In terms of plot and characters, these movies are very similar, to the point where even both of the characters look very similar, like they both got the goatee and kind of like this constant scowl with the snarky remarks. However, there's one major difference between these two movies. Iron Man relies on technology, and Doctor Strange relies on magic. And are you telling me that after seeing the first Iron Man movie, you wouldn't want to go see Iron Man but with magic? It's a cool idea, you don't have to change much to make it be good. I think a lot of people, including other artists, see it as sort of lazy and uninspired that you could just take something you've already done and recreate it with slight differences. However, I think that gives a really good chance to explore story structure and explore your characters that you've created within that story and how those differences align with each other. This works really well for Marvel so they can just keep pumping out the exact same type of movies with slight differences that will keep people entertained until they all come together and clash. I mean, if you want to talk about a broad sense, all the movies leading up to the first Avengers were generally very similar. Each had different characters and settings, but they all still had a main character that was some hunkly white guy that just wanted to do good. Each had a fatal flaw about him that they couldn't really overcome until someone else came in or they helped themselves get past it, and then they used what they learned in the third act of the story to defeat the bad guy. Look, I know this is a huge tangent, but I seriously don't fully understand it. Why do fans criticize media for copying itself, especially when the people who copy it were the original creators of that first thing? I've always enjoyed the same story but with slight differences in it, but maybe this is just a thing that either a small minority or maybe a lot of the public don't fully agree with. I don't know. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section or like hit me up on Twitter or something, you can do that too. Either way, please Please try not to put down art just because you think it looks similar.
Even when people do similar things, finding those differences can be actually very interesting, and you can actually learn a lot about the artist from those differences. So try to enjoy it, there's no reason to really not like it, it's just media, it's entertainment. And speaking of entertainment, I've been Elias of Elias Entertainment. Animation and storytelling in general can be similar, it can be different, but who knows? Let's just try to enjoy it all. Now time for me to go rewatch the entirety of Kung Fu Panda.